It started with a series of isolated events. There was a warehouse fire in Stepney. Two workmen were severely injured and one fireman was killed. There was an explosion followed by fire. When it was over, there was only enough left to determine that it was no accident. Nor was what had happened to the man whose body was found in a nearby street. He had been stabbed four times. A link connected him with the fire. A pedestrian told the police he thought he'd seen the man running desperately as though for his life. He couldn't be sure the fire swept the building so furiously in the confusion that followed. So many people were running. He wouldn't have noticed the man at all if it hadn't been for one thing. He was running away from the fire. The case was turned over to Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yard. And from that point, it was to involve Sherlock Holmes and myself in one of the most frightening situations of our lives. Nothing at all? Nothing, sir. No, no laundry marks, no papers of any kind? There had been laundry marks, but they'd been cut out, sir. And there was nothing at all in his pockets. What about this mud and his boots? Oh, the boat's been working on that since last night, sir, but they can't break it down. Do you mean they can't break it down? Laboratory. What's the use of having a new laboratory if they can't do a simple analysis? That's just what I say, sir. It's ridiculous. How do they expect me to solve a murder if I can't get any cooperation in my own department? That's just what I say, sir. No cooperation. I've got to do everything myself around here. Sir, suppose we get back a sample from the laboratory and go over with it. Oh, I suppose we'll have to. It might be faster that way, sir, if I might say so. Oh, I expect you're right. Look, pick up a sample from the laboratory and meet me downstairs. I'll have my carriage waiting there. Yes, very good, sir. Wilkins. Yes, sir. You said something about going over. Going over where? Going over to Sherlock Holmes and asking him to analyze that mud for us, sir. How did you know what I was thinking? I didn't mention his name. Didn't you, sir? Well, did I? I don't remember, sir. Hmm. Maybe I did. I suppose you must have done. Well, I suppose I must. All right, I'll see you downstairs. Very good, sir. Fingerprints. Laboratories. Gun trips. The way things are going around here, we'll need to start at Sherlock Holmes' department. <laughs> Doing. That's invasion of privacy. Peeping Tom, disgraceful. Invasion of whose privacy? Well, I don't know, whoever you're spying on. Well, I'm spying on my own privacy. Now, what does that mean? I was looking into a room across the street. Well, I know, I saw you. Well, it so happens that I've rented that room this morning for a week. Well, you think you're moving out? Well, I plan taking my telescope over there and spying on this room here. Now, now, put yourself together, Holmes. Oh, no, 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 there's a reason. Well, what is the reason? I'm expecting a thief. Oh, really? Have you given him an appointment? Now, you may not believe what I'm saying, Watson, but I'm being perfectly serious. When do you expect this thief and why? I'll explain the entire situation to you across the street. Oh, well, we're spying on ourselves over here, over there. Yes, well, something like that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad because I thought for a moment I was getting confused. Ah, good, good. We can see perfectly from here. I hesitate to bring this up, Holmes, but I can't see how we can see ourselves from here over there, even with the aid of a telescope. Well, that's uh, not an unreasonable deduction, Watson. But perhaps my methods would not appear so obscure to you if I told you that I've received a communication threatening my life if I accepted a certain case or used evidence that's been given to me. Well, what case? What evidence? Well, that's just the curious part of it, Watson. I have neither been presented with a case nor have I got any evidence. But somebody thinks you have. Obviously. This thief you expect, what's he going to steal? The evidence, of course. The evidence you haven't got? Now you have it. Well, now, look, really, Holmes. Uh, since this thief you expect can't steal the evidence you haven't got, that's right, isn't it? Yes, yes, that's right. 
Well, then why do you want to watch him? Well, so we can follow him when he leaves and find out why the man who was going to get in touch with me didn't get in touch with me. Ah! Couldn't be simpler. Yeah. Ah! The thief? No, no, no. Our old friend, the good inspector. I wonder what he wants to see us about. Perhaps he'll leave us a note. I could run across and tell him we're here. No, 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 don't do that. He'd want to arrest our thief and we wouldn't be able to follow him. Don't answer. Yes, sir. Perhaps they open. Yes, sir. Mr. Holmes. Doctor Watson. Mr. Holmes! Dr. Watson! Isn't that here? Yes, sir. Mr. Holmes! Dr. Watson! Well, what do you think they'll do now? Hmm. No, I didn't expect this. Well, I hope they'll leave soon. It doesn't look as if they're in any hurry. No, it doesn't. Can't be very far away, or they wouldn't have left the door unlocked. We'll wait for them. Yes, sir. Chemistry, sir. Uh huh. Chemistry, sir. Do you know anything about it? Oh, not very ridiculous. Well, I was just thinking, sir. Here's Mr. Holmes's equipment, and you have that sample of mud. Ah, oh, don't be silly. I don't know anything about chemistry. And here's Mr. Holmes's books, too. Suppose we were to do it ourselves, sir, and show them the resourcefulness of Scotland Yard, as it were. Now, Wilkins, that might be a very good idea. A thing like analysis, just reading a book, you know. I suppose you're right, sir. I thought perhaps it might be like following a cookery book. You remember I helped Mr. Holmes when you were dealing with that Lady Beryl case, and it didn't seem too difficult. Just so. Just like following a cookery book. Yes, sir. You know, I can do a bit of cooking. Once made a Yorkshire pudding. Those two idiots will blow up the flat if we don't get over there. Well, you know, strangely enough, Watson, they're not doing too badly. They're actually analyzing something and following the procedure from the book. Hmm. <laughs> Holmes, look. What? Hey. That may be your thief. We'll know in a minute, Watson. He's going to walk right into the strain. Hmm. That's all right. All we have to do now is wait until he comes out and follow him. Now, what do we do? Now, add three drops of KCL in H3OH solution. Here we are, sir. Three drops, you said? That's right, sir. Careful, sir. I am being careful. I'm being very careful. Don't make me nervous. 
Well, sir, if you slip up now, you've got to start all over again. Oh, quiet. Careful, sir. Quiet! Quiet! It was the door that time, sir. Well, say, come in there, something. Can't you see I'm busy? Very well, sir, come in. Come in! Mr. Holmes, I'd like to speak to you. I believe you were expecting me. Huh? I won't waste your time or mine, Mr. Holmes. I'm only here because I know you're well acquainted with Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yard. That's true, isn't it? Why, yes. I know him as well as I know my own brother. Charming fellow, Lestrade. Intelligent, too. Then you can tell him for me that the fire that destroyed a warehouse last night and caused the death of one fireman was not an accident. Really? At this very moment, another fire is raging in a block of old houses in Covent Garden. What? And unless the Crown is willing to pay 50,000 pounds into a foreign bank, which I shall designate, those fires will go on occurring. No one is going to stop me. I don't think that's quite right. Don't, Mr. Holmes. You have the reputation for being a clever man. I'll contact you again tomorrow. Not here, of course. A message will let you know where to join me. And when you come, come alone. Don't try and follow me. I'm a very good shot. And just to show you that I'm very serious, there'll be another fire this evening at six. A beautiful one. Here, yeah, this isn't what I expected at all. You'd better follow that man. Right. I've got to have a word with Lestrade. And Watson, be careful. He may use that gun. And that's what he said, as far as you can remember. Yes. That's exactly it, isn't it, Wilkins? That's it, sir. That's every word of it. Hmm, that's a fantastic scheme. Actually blackmailing the city. And he wasn't bluffing either. That fire at Covent Garden still isn't under control. No, Lestrade, he wasn't bluffing. He proved that with the fire last night and the murder of this man who was undoubtedly his accomplice. Why doesn't Dr. Watson come back? Don't worry. Watson won't lose his man. That man said there'd be another fire at 6 o'clock. Well, that leaves us three hours to wait, then. Yes and a whole city to work out where he's going to happen. Hmm. See what that is, would you, Wilkins? Inspector Lestrade? Yes? I have a message for you from a Dr. John Watson. Yes, what is it? <clears throat> he said to tell you that he followed the man to 43 Chester Street in Bayswater. And? <clears throat> He said to tell you that when the man walked in the entrance of the house, he was shot and killed. The killer got away and the man died without speaking. Somewhere in London, he's planted a bomb that'll go off in three hours. It was a small caliber revolver. Fired with deadly accuracy. He was killed instantly. You have no idea what the killer looked like, Doctor? No, none. I kept well back from him in case he should notice I was following him. Now, the killer ran through the house and out the back. For exactly two and a half hours to find out the secret he died with. Where he planted the next bomb? Yes. Oh, Lestrade, did you happen to notice this this morning when you searched his room? Yes, of course I did. It's a new suitcase. You'll never be able to trace him through that. They sold in over a thousand shops in London alone. They'd never remember him. Huh. But they'd certainly remember a man who bought four of them. Four of them? Yes, we're certain now that these fires have been started in London by means of incendiary bombs. He'd have to have something to carry them in, wouldn't he? There was a fire last night, one this afternoon, and one scheduled for tonight at six o'clock. That could be the fourth. Well, obviously your job is to find out where this chap bought these suitcases. You're quite right. I'll get on to that immediately. Oh, just one more thing, Lestrade. Yes? What were you trying to analyze in my flat this morning? 
some mud from the boots of the man who was murdered yesterday. Perhaps he's got mud in his boots, too. He has. I've already taken a sample, and I've got another one like this in the flat. I'll get in touch with you at Scotland Yard if I learn anything. I'll be there from now on. With any luck at all, we ought to be able to find a man who bought four suitcases. Well, let's hope he only bought four of them. We returned immediately to Baker Street and together worked feverishly to break down and analyze the traces of mud that had been found on the shoes of both murdered men. We were able to ascertain quickly that both samples were from the same source. We knew at least that we were on the right track, but where this track would lead, we had no idea. Time seemed to fly as the six o'clock deadline approached. We could only hope to conclude our experiment in time and then hope that it would lead us to that one point in London where death lay resting in a case. Inspector Lestrade, at his end, had placed the entire resources of Scotland Yard on this one assignment. The city was divided into sections according to a standing emergency plan. A large map on his office wall was divided into individual zones with a squad of men assigned to each zone. The men in these squads were detailed to inspect every shop in their area and report their findings. As quickly as the reports came in, the sections were marked off and the men shifted and reassigned. Every square foot of London was being covered. If only there was time. Give this to Inspector Lestrade and hurry. of nitrate. What does it mean? I believe it's a basic ingredient of dynamite, sir. Mr. Holmes give you this? Yes, sir. Hello, laboratory. Where would a man get nitrate in his boots? That's the problem, isn't it, sir? John. Hello, laboratory. This is Inspector Lestrade. Where is a man likely to pick up Explosive nitrate on his boots. In London? Yes, of course, in London. And the only place I can think of at the moment is the Army Warehouse, Knightsbridge. Is that the only place? The only place I can think of at the moment. However, give me a little time, and I may be able to think of a few more places. Give me a little time. I wish I could. Army Barracks in Knightsbridge. Go back to Baker Street and tell Mr. Sherlock Holmes I've gone on ahead. You bring him with you. Quickly now, quick as you can. No, we won't have time to be right. The inspector wants you to come to the army barracks at Knightsbridge. Army barracks? Holmes, that's it. It could be. We have no time to explore any further possibilities. Come on. I have a carriage waiting downstairs. Good. Have you noticed anything suspicious around here? No, inspector, I haven't. Does everyone coming into this area have to pass a guard like yourself? Yes, sir. That's orders. What about deliveries? They're all examined, sir. You have civilian workmen here. Did any of them bring in a suitcase? No, sir. We may be wrong. Oh, excuse me, sir. We've carpenters working here, and they bring in their tool chests. That's about the size of a suitcase, isn't it? Where are they? In that shed. They ought to be just finishing up. Come on. I'd like your attention, please. I'm Inspector Lestrade from Scotland Yard. First of all, I'd like to know if all the men detailed to work here are present now. 
I'm afraid I have to ask you to remain an additional hour. It may be necessary to ask you to build a protective shield around the store of nitrates. Why, our day ends at a quarter to six. Don't worry. You'll receive additional wages for your work. What if we don't want to stay? Why not? I could use the extra money. The nitrates might explode in case of fire. They were there yesterday and today. They'll wait till tomorrow. Why take chances? It's only another hour's work. Well, when do we know? We'll be able to tell you at six o'clock. I'm not going to wait around here anymore. You stay where you are. If they want my job, they can have it. Why should you be in such a hurry? There's only a minute to go. If you have something to say, I suggest you say it now. I have nothing to say. Oh, good. Then you've nothing to worry about, have you? What have I got to worry about? I don't know. Can't you think of something? Think hard. Yes, and when you thought we're going to have to have time to stop it. I'll throw that wall behind the pile of wood. Quick! Let me ever do that again. Come on. 